Rodney from I Comply, and we're here for another segment of Having Yarn on the Farm where we talk about all things farming related. And I'm here in a beautiful, albeit a little bit chilly, Stanthorpe this morning, uh, talking to a good friend of mine, Mario, that runs a small operation here. And we're talking about today um, how tough the smaller farmers are doing it and is there a role for the smaller farmer in today's agricultural industry. Uh, Mario, thanks for joining us, mate. No worries. Mate, uh, coming out to your farm, um, you're a small farm, you're a small operation. I've, yep. I've got to tell you, it, it reminds me of my childhood because growing up um, in Sydney, my grandfather had a fruit shop and 10 k's up the road, he had a, um, a little farm and every morning we used to load all the, the lettuce leaves and cabbage leaves and all the rubbish on the back of his ute and take it out to his farm and feed his cows and chickens. But he grew a lot of broad beans, he had all his figs undercover, he grew his bellotties. Um, coming out here it reminds me of that. You're, you're only a small operation, um, how, what do you grow and how many people do you employ? Oh, around 30,000 tomatoes all up, uh, a few ball beans in spring, um, a few cherries under the net there, not many though, just more of a hobby, and probably employ about four to six people four, through the season. Four to six people during the season and but obviously tomatoes. obviously with the labour crisis it's, uh, it's hard to get workers but it's even harder um, if you're a small farm, have you found uh, it's been tough to attract people? Like, how'd you go last year with regards to the workers? Yeah, couldn't get them. Couldn't get them? They wouldn't come here because they're too small. So, how, how does that affect your crop? Um, do, you, do you do it yourself or do you, well, do you let stuff rot? Um, how, does it, how does it handle? The kids have been weeding, weeding board beans. So your kids have got to do the weeding. The oh, kids, you can see actually. You can see. Pulling it, pulling I can see up the rows here. They're doing all the work. So you know, we couldn't pick most of our tomatoes. Half our tomatoes last year, we couldn't pick them. Just couldn't get around to them. With me and a, and a couple of staff, I do have. We couldn't get enough workers. So, do you, do you think that um, the small farms getting squeezed out now in today's society? Oh, I think so. Because yeah. it's getting harder and harder for a small farmer to do it. I think from from our perspective, what I what I see now is. Um, you got the higher, the bigger farmers, the, the bigger the risk. And you know, a lot of this, mm. it's been well documented that, you know, one of the largest farmers down here uh, toppled this year in tomatoes. Um, you know, what what can we do more to try and uh, try and help the small farmer? Because I, I just, I, I personally believe that little fish are sweet. There's a lot more smaller farmers than there are large, but uh, it seems everything the government does is geared towards the larger farmers. Yeah, I know. M make it easier. How, be... how do we do it? make everything accessible to everybody it's got to be a level playing field doesn't yeah, it that's right it's got to be a level playing field now the the ag visa which i've been a strong advocate for um was announced this week that the ag visa the first step uh is going to be rolling out in the next couple of weeks however you've got to be an approved employer under the seasonal worker program or pacific labor scheme in order to access the ag visa uh, your farm's too small to um to try and apply for yep. a program like that, isn't it? That's right, we can't do it. You can't do it, so the Ag Visa is really, um, as good as it sounded on paper, the the little bloke's getting stiffed again by the sounds of things. That's right, yep. So, yep. so tell me, Mario, what would be a normal day for you being a, a one-man band? Um, what would be a normal day for you on the farm? What time would you get up and what would you usually do? I get up as early as I can. Generally start around six or seven, like sometimes sooner, sometimes later. Um, just get organised, then we have to work in the morning. And then the couple of staff I do come out, get them organised by seven o'clock. And just go, go, go till dark. Go, go, go till dark. So Pretty you're much. you're spraying, the kids are weeding, um, you're pretty much doing everything on, on on your own as a as a small family That's business. Right. Well, you have to mm, and do, do everything from, yeah, from irrigation to spraying to to fixing things in the shed, everything. I noticed uh, when I pulled up, you've got tomatoes there ready to plant. Um, yeah. You got a crew coming in to plant them, or are you going to be planting them yourself? Uh, me and the kids will do some this afternoon. Yeah, and I'll do some more tomorrow morning with the one work I do have. We'll get them done. You'll get them done. It's it's really disheartening for me to see the small farms falling by the wayside and that you know you you've got a couple of kids you've got some beautiful land here um yeah is it is it a profitable enterprise to be a small farmer now or are you just uh living 
day to day just to put food on the table. Are you, are you actually, do you see costs escalating and, uh, and making it tougher or do you oh, think that, uh, you know, you no, can definitely. see yourself a long future here? Definitely, the costs are going up every year and it is getting harder and harder because the volume, we haven't got the bigger volume, so it's getting harder to, to ship small amounts of volume sometimes. I am concentrating on more of a niche market sometimes with, with bolotis and the, and the board beans. So how would that work? Like, like you look at, you know, trying to find that niche market. And I, I believe there is there is a market for the small farmer, okay? And I believe that boutique farmers that grow a premium product, there, there, there's, there's definitely a role for them because I see a lot of these large... Um, well, I call them chain store growers, okay? That's because, mm. let's face it, that's what they are. They grow for the yeah. chain stores. Um, and they're massive volume. And, you know, I, I have a saying, I say they grow produce to pass QA, to pass the quality assurance so they get paid from the chain store. <laughs> once, yeah. once, yeah. Once, that, once it passes the quality assurance, they get paid, they don't care. But for, for a smaller grower, like if you're, let's look at these Bellotti's as, as an example, sorry, broad, these um, broad, broad beans as an example. If you pick, 10 boxes, 12 boxes, and you want to send them to Sydney Market, um, do you have to pay a whole pallet space, or how does it how does it work almost, so that... Almost, yeah. There's, you get a half pallet charge or a full pallet charge, and your half pallet, like, it's not worth sending 20, 30 boxes. Yeah, so if you've got, so on a, on a pallet of broad beans, you've got, to do, be, you've got to do a full pallet. Yeah, you've got to do yeah. a full pallet, but you wouldn't have, you wouldn't do a full pallet, would you? Oh, we will here. Yeah. I mean, yeah eventually, all but... Um, so if you're just start, if you're just starting out and uh, you know you've got ten boxes, twenty boxes, you oh, still got to pay a half pallet space or sure. a full pallet yeah, space. Yeah, no, yeah, it costs you too much. So, so where would you sell the ten? if you had ten boxes, where would you sell them? You can't send them to market, or you send them to market, your profit, your profit's gone to to Lindsay's. Price. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. No, we got to grow a bit more to cover your cover your freight. But then, if you grow a bit more, then you're going to need more labour. Need more labour, yeah. That's right. And you got you got to try and find that labour. That's where it becomes a, a bit of a problem sometimes. To get them picked. See, one of the things I've seen, and I think it gets a lot of people don't realise, um, and a lot of a lot of the um, the workers don't realise, you actually get looked after a lot better on a smaller farm. You know, the smaller farm when you're working with the family, and I, you know, I go out and I talk a lot and I advocate for the smaller farmer because I think that um, I think that there's at the moment not enough advocacy for small farms. But if you're a if you're a um, a tomato picker, for instance, um, and you're picking and you're getting paid by the bucket, um, you'd be paying more than the bloke that's doing mass production, wouldn't you? Because you're a smaller farm. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we I mean, I've, we go by the hour last season, we got just done a bit early rate. Mm -hmm. And everyone's happy that way. Yeah, it's I think I think that if you can get the efficiencies, I, I believe hourly's the way to go. I've. Uh, you know, I think piece rates do have a place in in the industry, but I think that uh, piece rates need to sort of you need to make sure that these people are making that hourly. You have to give yeah. them the incentive to come to work. That's right. So these broad beans here, um, when did you plant them, and when are we going to look like uh, coming over here to get myself a, a box to take home and start shelling? Another probably another three or four weeks, I think. Three or four weeks. Three so four weeks we got we've got a little bit of flour. Yeah, there's a few beans on there. A few beans on there now. There's a couple of small ones down here. And they'll start, so they'll sort of start November. And when will they when will they go through to? Oh, generally for about four weeks, four to, maybe four to six weeks, depending. So it's a short crop, so. very short. Yeah, it's only yeah, four to six weeks. So these will sort of finish off. Your tomatoes will then... That's the plan, yeah. ...will then it's kick in. Then you've got your cherries. Um, you're growing the red bolotis this year too? Yeah, we're going to do some bolotis this year if I can get workers. If you can get workers? Yeah. So I think we we've might got, be able to help you with that. That'll be good. <laughs> so we didn't do any, not many bolotis last year because one, didn't have the workers or the water. Mm. Uh, but this year we've got we're, we're water. But yeah, if we can get workers, I'll plant a few more. I, I think that's the most, you know, talking to growers in Stanthorpe. It's all about workers. That's the hardest thing mm. is we've been through two years of drought. That's right. And really severe drought. And now all of a sudden, you know, we've got water. The crop's looking fantastic. I mean, look at these these broad beans. They just look absolutely fantastic. Um, it must keep you awake at night thinking, Jesus, I've got a beautiful crop. How am I going to pick it? And am I going to be able to turn that crop into cash? Yeah, on well, the weekend, the kids are, the kids will be handy on the weekend. The kids will be handy. On... Yeah. <laughs> well, how many, how many how many kids you got, Mario? And four kids. Four kids. So they they all get out here and and help. And yeah. you know, this this is. 
this epitomizes what a small family business is you know you got i mean i know, I know your wife's out here as well she she works oh, she hard helps, yes, she helps um yeah this is epitomizes and and we need we need more of it we need more small farmers we need more more support for small farmers because if we don't get the support for these small farmers they're just going to fall by the wayside and uh you know that starts with some sort of government support that starts more importantly by enabling these small farmers to get access to workers and get access from overseas the ag visa that came out I've, I've got to say i was disappointed with the way that it's been implemented because the whole idea i thought was the ag visa was going to give the little bloke an opportunity to get these workers however because you need to be an approved employer in stage one um, that's not going to happen you know you're you won't see any workers out of the ag visa you won't see any workers out of the seasonal worker program you won't see any workers out of the pacific labor scheme um, you will probably have to hire a contractor That's right. and then incur costs, you know, 10, 15 percent, whatever right. contractors charge mm -hmm. um, to try and try and pick your crop. And that's just all added expenses um, that are already on a very small margin. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Mario, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Do you see yourself still here? I don't know. I hope to be. You hope to be? I hope to be. I I, I go every season with hope. <laughs> that's all. I, I think that's all farmers can do, can isn't it? Hope. That's all farmers can do, mate. Look, we we wish you all the best. Your your broad beans here are looking fantastic. Um, your cherry crop over here. You didn't get hit by that hail the other day. Oh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Didn't yeah, didn't too. didn't knock anything around too much. Severe. It wasn't severe though. Not yeah. as bad as the other fellas. That's the thing about Stanthorpe, isn't it? It can uh, the weather can turn on you pretty quick. Hit and miss, eh? It is hit and miss. It's a beautiful place. Uh, it's a beautiful part of Australia, but uh, geez, that weather can be brutal. That's right. Yeah. Mate, we wish you all the best for your season. Thanks for having a yarn with us. And, uh, you know, if if I can take anything out of my chat and coming and spending time out at Mario's farm, it's that the little grower is a dying breed. We need to do more to support the little grower. You know, this is a good, small family business. He's got himself, his wife, his kids are out here helping. Um, it's just a shame that we can't get the support um, with regards to labour security. Um, this ag visa that's come out, disappointing that it hasn't, um, it's not accessible to the small bloke, but let's just hope that come April or May, um, when stage two comes out, it is accessible, but April or May, it's it's too, too late. There. It's too late for you. It's all over, isn't it? You, right. you sort of finished by March, April. Yeah, end of March, uh, end of April, pretty much done, done and dusted. So I guess all you can do um, with regards to um, trying to find workers is head into town, look for that big cross, go there on Sunday and pray. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if you've got time, you probably, don't, you probably don't have time, mate, because you're probably out here, out here picking. I won't have time on Sunday to do busy picking. <laughs> Mario, thanks for having a chat with us, mate. Really That's appreciate right. it. Um, I think that, you know, Everything's looking great. I think you, you should have a great crop and um, I'm sure I comply might be able to spare you a few workers this that'd, year to come and help good. you out. That'd be really good. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Thanks. for having the to us, mate. Thank good you. on you.